Hello guys, I'm Super Ron. Welcome back to the Frosty G unit. It's not quite as cold as last week, but it's still definitely a double sock day. And welcome to episode 17 of my GBS Zero build. In the last episode, we got all the front end wiring kind of where we wanted it to be. We cut everything to length and got it in the right area. So now we're gonna go to the middle of the car and sort out the Sierra switches and the Aerial Atom dash. So this is the Aerial Atom dash we showed you in a previous episode. It's based on the SPA Kit Dash 2 and it's got everything I need for drivability and to pass the IVA all in one compact little unit. So I don't have to have warning lights and gauges going all across the dash with holes cut everywhere. It's got everything I need here. You can see it whizzing through a little demo mode. We've got the rev counter with the rev shift light flashing in red there and we've got the speedo as well. And it's also got all the warning lights I need. So we've got indicator, main beam, other indicator, lights on and illuminations. And then it's also got all the warning lights I need as well. So we've got the handbrake and low fluid level light. We've got oil pressure and battery warning light as well. So at the minute, I've just got these running off a little remote control car battery to give it power. But what we need to connect it to is all the wires in the Tiger Loom. So there was a lot more wires in this section because on the Tigers, like the GVS Zeros, they have individual gauges for the speedo, the rev counter, um, the oil pressure, the volts, everything all the way across the fuel gauge and water temperature. But all of this is now in this nice compact little unit. So I've already thinned this out a little bit because before every single clock, all the separate um, gauges going across there had an ignition live, had an illumination, had an earth and a signal. So I've taken most of them out because now it's all in one unit and we've just got all our signal wires that go to various places all around the car. So all we've got to do is connect them up to the Aerial Atom dash. So it's time to get the wiring diagrams out. Actually, first things first, time to get the heater on. Now we can start. I got the aerial atom dash and the shift light steering wheel out of a car that was being broken. So they included the full front end loom. So the first thing I did, I went through and just separated the bits that I need. So this is just all the controls for the clocks. The rest of it is for behind the dash with ignition switches, light switches, everything else that's behind there and some of the engine bay. So this is the only bit we need. It's got a really nice aircraft style waterproof plug that goes straight in the back of the clocks. So what I did to start with is I looked up on the SPA site and because it's based on the kit dash two, I found all the wiring diagrams and the wire colors. This is actually kind of in the atoms, a light version of the SPA two, because it doesn't have the two pressure sensors and the two temperature senders, which are standard on the kit dash two. So it is a bit of a light version, but that's okay for me. All you'd use them for is probably oil pressure, fuel pressure, oil temperature, and maybe another temperature there. So what I've got is a oil pressure gauge because that's the only thing that's gonna concern me to go in as well. So the next thing to do was to look at the Tiger Loom and find out where all the wiring for the temperature senders, the taco, the oil pressure, everything that I need to connect to the dash goes. And so I've just got to cross reference these together and join this into the loom as neatly as possible. And you saw me going through the loom that goes in the back of the clocks there. I've got everything worked out now with the help of the wiring diagrams. We've managed to figure it all out. So we've got this one here is for the speedo, and that'll be going to a sensor that senses a magnet on the prop shaft. On the auto shack conversions, we usually use a GPS signal, and it's really reliable, and it calibrates itself. So this will be a bit more tricky to calibrate, 
but for the IVA, it does have to be off, driven off the rear wheels. So, got that done. This is the little button to go through the menu on the clocks. We've got these ones, are the ignition live, the earth, and the illuminations. Then these are all the signals for the fuel tank, coolant temperature, and then all the warning lights. We've also got this one over here, which is labeled NU. And when you look at the diagrams, the NU is actually an alarm. So I'm not sure whether that's an alarm on the, um, like the security or an alarm as a safety feature for the engine, but we might look into that because on the dash, next to the battery light, there is a little symbol that looks like an alarm. So I might speak to SPA and see how you activate that because with all the wires, I haven't managed to have that coming on yet. So I'll look into that. Even if it's a security device, that might be handy, but we'll look at that. Now, usually to connect all the wires together into the loom, I'm an avid solderer. So I solder everything together normally, but it's a bit of a conflict on the internet whether you solder or whether you crimp. The disadvantage with solder is what can happen is if you've got lots of wires together, that can make quite a hard, rigid um, point in the loom and it can go brittle and snap. So what the professional wiring loom builders usually do is crimp. And I've been speaking to racing circuits a lot lately. They make some amazing wiring looms and I asked them what they use. And to join the wires together in points, they use these little crimps. Just like a factory manufacturer's loom. So I've got a few different sizes. I've got my crimps with a few different jaws. So hopefully one of them will work for the crimps and be able to make some nice joins. But they've sent me through some stickers. So we'll be getting them up on the sticker wall. I've still been working on lots of cars and doing lots of things. So I've got a lot more stickers coming in through different places. Another few YouTubers, Boosted Boys, have finally got some stickers. So I've got them through the Twin Turbo MR2. So they'll all be going up on the wall. And I have still got the cylinder head here still to do, still to build back up. But we've had a nice big box arrive from Nevlock Performance. I'm sure you can work out what's in there. So once the engine's back, we'll be able to build all that up together. But for now, let's try and do some crimping. Before I do join it all together, I think what I'm gonna do is, cause I'm not sure whereabouts it is gonna sit, whether it is gonna sit so it's exposed or whether it will be all hidden behind the dash. But just in case, I think I'm gonna put some braid around this and heat shrink it is up until where all my joins are. And then at least if it is shown, it'll be nice and neat. So let's do that. That looks a bit more presentable, a bit less of a spaghetti junction. So now we've got that bit nice and neat. We'll join the ends to the car. I've just been doing a load of testing to make sure I could crimp them up okay with these crimpers. And the trouble I was having, the smallest ones, my crimpers were just a little bit too big and they weren't crimping properly. They were just kind of not quite squeezing down or if you tried to put too big a one, it just kind of deform it. So the big ones are okay. Once I put the wire size up, they crimped it perfectly. And it made a really nice crimp all the way around and you can pull them as hard as you can and they won't break. It's just the smaller ones. But then I remembered I had these El Cheapo like um, car boot sale crimpers. And for the smallest ones, they've actually made a perfect crimp. And these, you can pull these as hard as you can and they are joined. So with a bit of heat shrink over them, they'll be nice, no solder. No brittleness, should be all right. The only thing is I've got through quite a few of these terminals testing. Hopefully we've still got enough. So thank you racing circuits.
And a little mid-session update. Got them all crimped on, we've got none left over. Definitely a bit more fiddly than doing it with solder because you can just wrap them around and solder one, two, three, four, five. But if this is the more secure way and the future-proof way, the other thing to never forget is to put your shrink wrap on first. So now we can put these on. It's just like making a brake line and forgetting to put your union on. We've all been there. But now it's just a case of heat shrinking these all up, covering them up. Then before I connected them, I also put a bit of braid on. So once I've heat shrunk these, I can slide this up and cover them all up. Let's carry on. And as equally as important as not forgetting to put it on, just make sure no heat shrink falls off before you crimp it. Ask me how I know. And check it out, all wrapped up, all in its braid, all heat shrinked up. We've got the connector that goes to the back of the clocks. Then we've got the little wire that comes to the switch to change the settings on the dash. And it goes into the rest of the loom. We've got a few coming out the back that we've still got to connect up to other places. I did add some um, ignition live illumination and earth for the oil gauge. They come off the clock, so they've got the same feed. So they'll be on the same fuse. Got the brake fluid low that goes to the top of the master cylinder. And then we've got the speedo that goes to the back. So they've got to be put in the rest of the loom. But I think this looks pretty awesome. And hopefully it will all work. So that's all the wiring for the clocks all in. That's gonna sit up here, something like that, inside the scuttle going into the back of the clocks. And then you've got the little button there to change the settings and the trip and everything. So next on the list is to sort out the wiring for the Sierra Storks. So we've got indicators this side, uh, we've got lights on this side, and also we've got the main and dip flash. We have got wipers on this side, but as we've not got a windscreen, we're not gonna need them. So it did come with a bit of GBS loom in it. So this is a Sierra plugs this end, then they all go to this multi-plug, which I guess on the GBS, they must have a scuttle loom and this plugs into here. So what I'm gonna to need to do, the Tiger Loom is slightly different because it looks like they used, didn't use Sierra light switches. They must have used something else because it's got the plugs for the old style rocker switches like you get in a mini and things. So we just need to work out what we're doing here. The Sierra column has got a hazard switch on the top, but I'm not gonna be using that. I'm gonna be using um, the nice posh Savage ones we've got to go with the horn button. So I think what I need to do is check out the wiring diagrams again, which is a good excuse for a warm up, and work out what we're gonna to need to go where. These are all labeled, much the same as the front. We've got ignition, we've got dip switch, we've got horn and indicators, we've got a light switch, hazard switch, and rear fog switch, so we have got all these in the right area, we just need to work out what we're gonna to do to the switches that we're actually gonna use. We've also got to wire up the module to the rear fog light so it comes on as an IVA requirement and doesn't come on if you turn the ignition on and back off again. So that's all pre-wired. I've just got to need to wire it into a main feed and a dip feed, and then that'll run the rear light. So let's get those wiring diagrams back out. more unwrapping, it's like an early Christmas. So we've got the fog light, horn, and hazards. They're all gonna be going to the savage switches in the middle. We've got dip switch and indicator switch. They're actually the same stalk, so they'll be going together. We've got light switch, which will be going over to this Sierra light switch. And then we've got ignition which will be going to the Sierra ignition key. So now what I've got to work out is on this Sierra loom, 
what goes to what. So I've got the Sierra wiring diagrams and I've been over there and work out how the switch works, how the indicators, flasher relays, everything works. And then how I'm going to incorporate that into the Tiger Loom. So let's get some cross referencing and get it connected up. Something that did just pop back into my head, when I was fitting the steering column and tried to scuttle on and got them all cut out really nicely, I did remember that there was hardly any room between the switches and the scuttle where the plugs go. As you can see, in there, the plug is right up against the scuttle this side, and it does still need to go back slightly to where it needs to be. The other side's got a little bit more clearance, but this side, so I could make a nice little neat cut out there but I don't really want to unless I really really have to um, so I think what I might do is just space the column back slightly just the washers worth just enough for that to clear and then we can decide whether I do need to take a little notch out the bottom of the scuttle just for the plug or whether I can get away with it another way so I'll wire it all up for now. And that should be okay, I think. So on all the wiring diagrams, all the terminals are labeled like 15 is ignition live, 30 is always battery live. And then this is the light switch here. So the electricity comes through, through the switch when that's closed, across to 56, which is the input to the dip switch. Then 56A and 56B are the main and dip out. So I need to know where all these terminals are on the switches. And I was struggling on the car to see in there, but then I realized it's only two bolts and it actually comes off. And inside there, each terminal is actually labeled. You've got 56 there at the bottom, 53, two, 58, and they all cross reference to all the numbers on the wiring diagram. So I'm gonna make a note of all these so then I know what I need to connect up to. Well, I'm glad I did double check the wiring on the plugs because on the wiring diagrams, they give you a little picture of the back of the plugs but they're in a completely different place to where it's marked on the column itself. So I don't know if there's different types of Sierra, whether it's early or late. I have noticed on some Sierras that it does have a horn button on the end of the indicator stalk and others have it as a button in the middle. This one's a button in the middle. So I'm wondering whether that is the difference, but we're all lined up now. I've done some real time simulations, ringing it out with the multimeter. So we've got indicators left, right, dip beam, main beam, flash, side lights. The only thing I haven't got is the feed to the dip switch. So on the wiring diagram, we've got one feed in and that comes across to the side lights. I've got that, but I haven't got this other one, the 15 to 54. I can't find that on the back of this. It's not um, written in the casing. So that's a bit strange, I'm going to have to do a bit of investigation there. But that's the last bit, and then we can wire it all in to the Tiger Loom. There's a few bits that I'm going to add extra wires in, because on the Tiger Loom, there's no um, feed-in for a flash, which would be pretty cool to have. It's there on the stalk, it's just got dip and main. So if I have flash as well, that'll be pretty cool. But yeah, I'm pleased I've got that, and we know where we are now. So with all the extra investigation that I had to put into the Sierra wiring, we have run out of time today. So that's gonna bring this episode to an end, but I'm really happy of how it's gone. I'm really happy of how the aerial atom loom is now joined into the tiger loom seamlessly, and it looks really professional. And with the crimps, they did take a little bit longer to put together than it would be just to solder it, but it's kept the loom so much nice and flexible. When you get lots of soldered joints together, it makes a really rigid, stiff thing. And that's when it can be failure because it, they fatigue and they can break. I've never had any problems before, but it can happen. And so with the crimps, there's no chance of that at all. It's all shrink wrapped together, which holds the wires as well and seals them all together. 
but I'm really, really happy as how that went. So I've just got a last couple of wires to find on the Sierra column. So if there's any kit car guys or Ford guys out there, I just need to know on this light switch where the main feed and out is to go to the dip switch. And once I've got that, we've got them all labeled. We've got all the Tiger Loom ready to go. So it'll just be a case of crimping these together, wrapping it all up, and that'll be that part done. So I know it's been another complete episode on wiring and by the end of this, you guys are gonna love it just as much as I do, but we are nearly there. It's just gonna be a case of wrapping everything up now. Once this is connected, that'll be pretty much the last time and then I can make the engine loom, which is gonna be a lot more exciting. I hope you're still enjoying the build and not bored of it yet. So make sure you give this episode a like and if you're bored in the next week, until the next episode comes out, all these are in a playlist so you can watch the whole thing all the way through. So I'm gonna check out some more wiring diagrams, see if I can figure this out. But until next time, make sure you have fun.